Hello, and welcome back to our study of Pinine Halacha, the teachings of Rabbi Yezer Malamed Shlita. We are continuing along with our conversation about the laws and customs of Havdalah Amatzoi Shabbos. Let's look at some of the Minhagei Havdalah. Kivan Shetiknu Chachamim Lomar Havdalah Kos Yayin, Yeshlechos Bekos Beisa Havdalah. Since Chazal instituted that we should recite Havdalah over a cup of wine, so therefore one should hold the cup in one's hand at the time of Havdalah. And we hold it in our right hand, which is always considered the more important hand. And this is generally the rule in all blessings that when we have to make a bracha on something, we hold it in our right hand. So that means that you hold the cup of wine, you make bora priyagafen, but the second bracha, when you make on the spices, you have to hold the spices in your right hand. So therefore, many people have a plate on which they put the havdala items because of, first of all, spilling wine, and some people will see as how they extinguish the fire, but also wax dripping, you don't want it on your table. We have these beautiful mats that kids made in school for Havdalah that we've been using for years and years. So therefore, we make the bracha on the wine, you hold the cup in your right hand, then you place the cup down on the plate or the mat, and then you pick up the besamim in your right hand, and you don't return the cup of wine until you get to the fourth bracha. V'yesh mahadrin lechos hasakos gam be'es berchos ha'besamim v'haner, there are some who have the custom that they want to hold the cup the entire time. So then they'll hold the cup in their right hand and they will then switch it to their left hand and hold that for the duration and they will keep the cup of wine, and then return it to their right hand after they finish with the besamim. You run into a bit of a problem when it comes to borei meoreho eish. How is it possible to uh, focus your fingernails, as we'll see, how we hold our fingers to the fire. So therefore, my suggestion is to place the cup down, but again, whatever your custom might be. Some have the custom of sitting while reciting Havdalah. Because by sitting down, all of those who are listening, sitting establishes what's called kivius. It's more of a set situation, and therefore they can be yotze in a more permanent sense. And many stand for Havdalah. This is my custom. It's following the Ramah. That we stand for Havdalah because we want to show honor to the Shabbos when it goes out. And so that it's recognizable that everybody has intent to be Yotze with the Havdalah by listening. They should all surround the person making Havdalah. But the Eved, but Yevet, if someone heard it from far away, even if he was not in the circle, so to speak, but if he had kavana to listen and to be yotze, you'll be yotze. As we discussed with Kiddush previously, anytime we have a coast that is used, a cup that is used for a blessing, for a mitzvah, we have to make sure that the cup is clean, both inside and out. And we also make sure that we use a nice Kiddush cup for Havdalah. It's funny that we call it a Kiddush cup when we're using it for Havdalah. Nobody ever calls it a Havdalah cup. And as we discussed a shirim in the past, that you have to make sure that it has the proper size liquid amount, which is a revius of the lug, which is 75 milliliters, and the chazonish is 150 milliliters. And if the cup is bigger, the mitzvah is to fill it with wine. Because we want to make sure that we have a full cup. And 
And even though, as we discussed with Kiddush, people don't like to fill it up all the way necessarily because we don't want to spill, and it's not honorable if you have a spilling cup when making Kiddush or at a wedding or something like that. As Kosa Havdala Nogin Rabin Malay Mamish Agdoseha, when it comes to Havdala, many people have the custom of filling the cup all the way to the top. So that some of the wine does spill over. Because this is a sign of blessing. My cup indeed overflows. Ideally, the person who is baking Avdala should drink the entire measure of wine, the Revius, so that he can make the after blessing when he's finished, the Alagafen. That apialacha, he says, however, for havdala, it's enough if you drink a cheek full. In other words, it's enough that you would be able to blow up a cheek and fill that up. Different opinions of this as well. Those who are listening and being yoti with havdala should not speak until the person making Avdala finishes drinking. Because since the mitzvah of Havdala is to be done over a cup of wine, until that cup of wine is drunk, certainly the requisite amount, that is when Havdala ends. However, if someone B'dyeved did speak before the drinking takes place, you're still Yotze nonetheless. So we have our procedures for Havdalah. Again, different customs, but the important thing is that we should all make sure we understand the importance and the beauty of this mitzvah so we don't just run right into the week, but we bring the blessings and the holiness of Shabbos into the week that begins ahead. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you here next time as we continue studying Pinin Halacha, the teachings of Eliezer Malamed Shlita.